All right, tonight our friends from the Rochester Museum and Science Center are here to talk to us about the tomato frog. Hi, Dan. How Hi. are you? Good to see you. How are you, Kayla? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Got you? your hands full there. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, she so what is this that you're holding? This is actually a false tomato frog. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So can you tell us about this tomato frog? Well, false tomato frogs. Tomato frogs are mainly from Madagascar. Uh, it's a very small place for them to come from. So um, that's basically where they are all from right now. Okay. Yeah. You can tell by the color of the red. Yeah, tomato. very much. Right, Not right. something you see around here. Yeah. yeah. Looks like something you would put on your sandwich, right? Right. <laughs> we live in a, uh, an environment that's rich in iron oxide, red okay. pigmented yep. uh, minerals in the soil exactly. that help and keep it camouflaged from predators. Mm -hmm. Yep, they like to live in uh, very heavy rain water areas, okay. so in grasses and in forests also. Cool. It's a female. Mm -hmm. This is actually, yes, a large female. Uh, she's the largest one we have on exhibit right now, it's frogs. Right. Um, and females are actually much larger than the males are, and they're actually brighter in color as well. Does the frog give off a toxin? They actually do. Um, it's not toxic to people just by holding them, but it is toxic if you ingest it. So it actually causes a severe anaphylaxis of some sort. Um, that's what it, it mimics in a way. And for predators that are um, like snakes, snakes are one of their natural predators mm -hmm. that'll try and eat them. Um, they'll try and bite them and then they'll give off this toxin and then they'll get a um, very thick mucusy feeling and their eyes will get weird too. So, the um, frog will or the No, the, the, the snake will. Um, so it's pretty rapid it, that the, the yeah, toxins take about. Yes, it does. So then the animal will drop them and leave them alone. But their bright colors tell other species that they are highly toxic of some sort. Just like others, like butterflies, like the monarch butterfly. Yes, very similar, uh, right? bright colors in the wild mean I am toxic uh. in some way. So like poison dart frogs are highly toxic, yep. very toxic to Yellow humans. Yellow jackets. <laughs> right. Yes, bright colors mean I am poisonous. Right. So you don't want to mess with anything bright colored, but animals also adapt to that too. Okay. So now um, how, uh, because they're from such a small island, Madagascar, is their environment being threatened in any way? Yes, deforestation is always a problem there. Also, pet trade is an issue as well. Mm. Uh, people like to take animals from the wild, and there's not a lot in the wild because they're only in Madagascar. I like to say that animals from Madagascar, like lemurs, are all threatened because if something happened to that one island, what would happen to all the species? Right. They'd all be gone. What, what does it mean to have it when a species is threatened? Um, that they could become endangered or even extinct one day. Mm -hmm. And a pet, pet trade stresses the species by creating a demand for them. Exactly. So. Is, is that primarily in the United States or is that throughout the world? Around the world, yeah, exotic around. pet trade is a big problem. One of the messages in this exhibition, this particular species is one of 16 on display at the Science Center, and that we're trying to get people to think more deeply about frog species, not just uh, what the value or the merit of keeping them at, in the wild, but also the messages they reveal about the quality of our environment. They're a bellwether species, so you can tell by the health of certain amphibians how healthy the environment is. Right, because they take a lot of time toxins, a lot of things right through their skin. Exactly. exactly. That's why I'm wearing gloves right now. Okay. I don't want her to take anything from my skin and absorb it through hers because their skin is very permeable. And her being so toxic, you wouldn't want to be... No, exactly. I wouldn't want to touch her and then touch my face or my mouth would or anything you like want, that. Would anyone want that frog as a pet? They do. People actually think that they're great pets, but they're really not because they are so... Um, they're near threatened in the wild, but people think of them as good pets. But I think frogs in general aren't great pets because they're hard to take care of in any so aspect. if I'm out walking in the woods and I see a frog and my kid's like, hey, wow, can we take it home? I should say no. <laughs> no. We'll come back and visit it here. Yes, <laughs> yes. And if they try to pick it up, make sure you have gloves first. Okay. Yeah. I never would have thought of the glove thing, especially yeah. with like toes. You hand them all the exactly. time as a kid. I mean, I know kids that pick them up all the time, but I always say try to pick them up with something to protect yourself and also them as well. Sure. Is, is there research that are currently being done with frogs, particularly that one or others? Yeah, actually in this, we're extending this exhibition through April to take a closer look at other research in the community. And one of the special presentations affiliated with the exhibition is a presentation by Jack, Dr. Jack Rubert at the University of Rochester, who mm -hmm. studies the transmission of viruses and the clawed African water frog, Xenopus. We have a tank of them in the exhibit. They're a magnificent looking frog, but they also tell a really interesting story about the spread of viruses in bodies of water as people trade these pets uh, in the exotic pet trade. The viruses have been traveling with them. It's an interesting story, and we're going to look at that in the spring in our evening lecture series. Okay. So now one of my questions that, like, being that this is an exotic kind of animal, and we've had other kinds of exotic animals being introduced into ecosystems 
ecosystems in the United States, the, uh, the zebra mussel, the yes. goby fish, and um, there's mm -hmm. other plants. Would that pose a big threat in the same respect? Like this, if, the, if that frog or a similar frog from Madagascar got out, would it survive and be able to be a nuisance like some of these other things? I mean, if it was released into the right areas where there's heavier rains and stuff like that, similar to their habitat in Madagascar, it could become a problem because like cane toads in Australia, they're in, introduced there by humans thinking that they could take care of another issue, but they actually are causing more of an issue there um, with causing deaths to their native species compared to the invasive species. The, the issue of invasives is a huge one, and it's one that we're looking at uh, in all different contexts. In this particular case, it would depend on what other relationships exist in that ecosystem gotcha. and what predator and prey relationship is being disrupted. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Is there any exciting news about the exhibit that's going on? Well, it's done really well. The way the exhibit has been designed is we've added a great deal of story spaces. And the one thing we're particularly proud of is we've gone into our collection of 1.2 million objects and we pulled from our Native American collections totem poles and icons that show the frog as symbols of water and prosperity. So when we presented this exhibition, when we chose it, we chose it because we were able to do different things with it. We're featuring live animal presentations every weekend, mm -hmm. live animal feedings. It's just a different experience for the Science Museum and it has done so well, we elected to keep it through April 10th and we're really excited. So if Very kids good. want to get there, they need to get there before April 10th. Right. Yeah. Come see us. It's an awful lot of fun and that we've had a, a great deal of excitement around it. It's yeah. great. 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 Dan, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Kayla, thank you. Air 5. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. If you want to know more about this animal and others like it, go to our website, homeworkhotline.org, and click on the videos. Now stay right there. We'll be back in a second.